Thank you, Chimera, for returning as a sponsor for this video. Stay tuned to hear more about them later. A free-for-all, full-loot PvP MMORPG. A hardcore, dare I say, true sandbox. The possibilities with Mortal Online and MMO brought forth by Swedish developers Starvault were as long and boundless as the game's development cycle. Angry pitchforks already gather in the comments at the mere mention of the style of game Mortal Online is and was, and those ready to say, see I told you so. But the story of Mortal Online is both interesting and unique in the sense that its lack of blockbuster success doesn't take away from the game's story or impact. Even now, the sequel Mortal Online 2 struggles with issues of its own, but still impresses with over 110,000 copies sold. So Mortal Online's story and legacy is still being felt today. Mortal Online felt like the closest thing that the world had seen to Morrowind Online, and with the game's dedication to territory control and warfare, that just about makes up the game's rabid fandom. What went wrong with the Unreal Engine MMORPG set to give players a true sense of sandbox and endless possibilities? How did Mortal Online go from hyped to nearly forgotten on the sidelines before eventually being abandoned for a sequel? On this episode of Death of a Game, we dive into the world of hardcore sandbox MMORPGs and attempt to diagnose the largest contributing reasons for the ultimate inability of Mortal Online to find success. Make sure to grab a group of friends, as traversing such a dangerous world alone is never advised, fellow adventurers. Let us prepare to put this case out to pasture. Mortal Online's tale technically begins in 2002, when development apparently began. But significant game development wasn't done until 2005, when a team of Swedish developers led by Henrik Nerström, sorry my Scandinavians about butchering the names, would form the company Starvault. They would eventually become a publicly traded company in 2007, even before releasing a single product. They did, however, obtain a license for Unreal Engine 3 on July 3rd, 2007, which would tie Mortal Online's destiny and fate to Unreal Engine 3, something many people at the time considered a pathway to success. That same year, Unreal Engine 3 was introduced, and it was largely unknown in the realm of MMORPGs. It was perhaps reasonable to think that Unreal Engine 3 would be a continuation of Unreal Engine 2's phenomenal success following the release of Lineage 1 and 2, but UE3 was completely new, and it was going to introduce hazards to any game, let alone an MMORPG, which was not designed from the start to run on Unreal Engine. I have a personal connection to some of the game's death occurrences on the series. With others, I only have a cursory familiarity with the title and must compensate through extensive research and consultation with more experienced players. Mortal Online, like the other FFA hardcore sandbox PvP MMORPG we've already explored on the series, Darkfall Online, is a game that I have had a long-standing relationship with. In fact, despite the forum date saying I joined in the beginning of 2009, I actually joined the forum sometime in 2008. I was a longtime forum member and Mortal Online hopeful. We used to play Age of Chivalry in preparation, the famous Half-Life mod that would go on to create many spin-off titles such as Chivalry, Chivalry Medieval Warfare, and even Mordhau to an extent. I was a bit more of an insufferable troll at that time, as my avatar would imply, but Mortal Online and hardcore sandbox titles like it were a haven for weirdos of all kind, just like me. I was attracted to the thought of another open-world sandbox MMORPG made in an impressive graphical engine with capabilities for territory warfare and full loot. Initially, I joined a Roman military guild with the hierarchy and all, and then went on to join a more laid-back guild dubbed Kendrick Rising. I, like many others, was hyped in the possibilities of what could be in Unreal Engine 3, and we were counting on the little-known and experienced developer Starvault to deliver on that. Starvault partnering with Intel in October of 2008 would launch the Alpha of Mortal Online the following month making the game purchasable for the first time. Copy 666, I believe, was my copy. Ominous, some might say. 
Now the alpha launch of Mortal Online was truly an alpha in every sentence of the word. The game was barely functional and you couldn't log in for the majority of it, and you frequently crashed when you were creating a character, forcing you to have to restart from the beginning. But once it got past that, the planet was nearly devoid of life and even elements depicted in the trailers, such as the rudimentary combat, didn't even function properly. All in all, despite it being an alpha, Star Vault making it a paid test in a sense before the product was even properly ready was questionable. But this was before the age of early access, and a small studio like Star Vault, for an ambitious project like Mortal Online, would need proper funding. The most worrying problem for me, my 16-year-old self, was that the game's hit registration was very problematic. This could be due to the server-side issues, or because the game was more client-side focused making it more reliant on ping and FPS performance. Whatever the technical reasons were, these were unknown to me at the time, but I could sense that the hit registration issues in a fully third-person game would be incredibly problematic and not satisfying if they didn't work properly. Star Vault would announce the closure of Alpha in December 2008, in the beginning of the closed beta, but this would mark the time that I would bow out of the project as I would choose to play Darkfall Online instead, due to the aforementioned reasons. Open beta for Mortal Online would hit the web February 1st, 2010, nearly a year after the game became originally playable. Finally, the Mortal Online people had been hyped about was starting to take shape, set with the launch later in the year. The plot of Mortal Online was simple, because, well, there wasn't really one. It was a clan-based FFA that had factions with minimum lore based on pre-existing cultures and civilizations, starting with the most imperialistic of the races, the Tindramine, aka the Humans of Knave. The Kurite, aka a con like race of step focused people, the Shivra, which were kind of like the elf like people, and the Thursar making up for the orc like people. The Sardukan make up for the magic focused desert faction, while the Sindoan are more like the Egyptians with a focus on mathematics and philosophers. Finally, you have the two Arctic focused races, the Callard, basically the Vikings, and the Blaine, which are kind of like hairy dwarfs. <laughs> While the world of Nave and its factions and inhabitants are rather barren in terms of lore and history, the world itself is quite vast and expansive, and Mortal Online and its developers seem to take an approach more reliant on players creating the story, and thus the emergent gameplay. Players fighting over resources, territory, and most important of all, their loot. This could be a deliberate play by Star Vault, or merely just one chosen due to a lack of resources. This is where it's arguable if a sandbox MMO is more expensive than a theme park MMO, with the raid style in-game or not, since technically it requires less content to function if the players carry the load. But the burden was now being placed on the players, and if the systems and design of Mortal Online weren't up to snuff, and for example weren't easily exploited, then it could be the death of a game. After lengthy testing and near rewriting of their original code, Star Vault would launch Mortal Online with a subscription fee, June 9th, 2010, to mostly a bit of a deafening silence, with no major outlets covering them resulting in a non-score on Metacritic. Either the fanbase outlet niche already was reeling from the failures of Darkfall, or perhaps there were more reasons why Mortal Online wasn't taking off. Starting with the combat in Mortal Online, for action combat, it was slower than most games and most people would be used to. The reason being, things like fainting and spamming fast attacks were essentially dead because in Mortal Online, combat was intentionally slower to account for this, and ping reasons. With everything in the game costing stamina just about, and charge swings doing the majority of your damage, you can't just needlessly swing at people, especially because people can directionally block your attacks and even counterattack you. And if you run out of stamina, you're effectively dead left standing there just eating blows. It was a skill-intensive, albeit slower RPG-style combat more akin to Morrowind of anything. Some people loved it, some people hated it. It was very polarizing. I think the larger issues with the combat in Mortal Online are the aforementioned hit registration and latency issues I noticed whenever I was in alpha testing the game. They were rearing their ugly head again, and the game was still very much suffering from these issues and sadly being crippled because of it. When a strong portion of the game is based on combat, and the combat only works, well, sometimes, well, you're gonna have a problem. Which is a shame that it would take Mortal Online a good while to fix these issues, as they offered robust first-person combat with the ability to mix and match magic and sword, or magic and bow if you chose to. Nave might have been huge and barely filled with points of interest, but it was also even traversable by mount. And that meant that mounts also allowed for combat, introducing another layer of PvP and combat to the game. 
The player versus environment was challenging enough too to keep players on their toes, especially when one false move and suddenly you're dead and all of your things are now on your body, and you have to race back to your corpse to make sure you can get them before somebody else does. Which kind of sounds crazy for a lot of players, but is actually part of the thrill for some of us players who like to player versus environment or grind in a game like Mortal Online. Other issues we have technically already covered as well were highlighted in the Engadget review of Mortal Online, where they stated that when the game isn't struggling from letting you create a character in the first place, it's struggling from the fact that the world designers are lazy, lazy people. Because the world is full of uneven terrain and structures that players have to jump over. Like, you know, stairs. <laughs> Besides issues of a barren world and a combat system that sometimes worked, Mortal Online was having even more issues at launch concerning some of the systems that the game was built on. For starters, the crime and murder were rampant in the game, and not in the intended way. Players upon spotting in the world were being robbed naked before they even really had a chance to respond, and then had no idea how to seek recourse or even retribution. With a poor new player experience and effectively no tutorial, many players were being thrust straight into a hardcore world with effectively no rules and expected to play nice. The result was as you would expect. Mayhem. And not the good kind. Star Vault being slow on the trigger to fix the issues caused not only just a bleed of what little players did exist, but made sure any other players would steer far away from the title with people dubbing Mortal Online, a gank box where you get killed and robbed even when you're naked. Mortal Online's first expansion, The Dawn, was scheduled to launch June 9th, 2011, and included much-needed graveyards for novice players to replete with low-level zombies. Dawn would also offer additional housing types, creature handling, taming systems including breeding, cooking, and even some changes to the criminal system to combat the widespread random player murdering. This is a difficult balance to strike in an already hardcore game, because many players believe that operating without rules and systems is just hardcore, and that adding systems is soft or care bearish. However, Star Vault's insignificant impact on the PvP ecosystem was going to exacerbate the game's difficulties and result in future player base hemorrhaging. They were referring to the PvP system in Mortal Online as if it just required quality of life tweaks, when it actually required a complete overhaul, or at least the addition of new systems. Overall though, the changes and additions for the game were encouraging, which indicated that the future updates might be able to address these game difficulties that I just outlined. While there's no method to track Mortal Online's population before 2015, the game had almost no big press coverage or Google search coverage even, suggesting that the game's population was quite small. And Mortal Online, unlike most theme park MMOs, would require more population to properly function, so suffering from a low population would make the game suffer even more overall. And that's the dangers of making a sandbox MMO, is that you are so reliant on player actors to make the game playable. Kamira returns as a sponsor for this video, the clothing company I have been wearing lately that only uses premium materials when making their clothes but manages to keep things affordable all the same so you don't have to pay a fortune for nice fitting clothing made with sustainable manufacturers and factories. You can check me out in one of their hoodies here, which is personally one of my favorites that they offer on their website Kamira.com, where you can use my code NERDSLAYER to save 10% off of your purchase. You can check out their plain t-shirts, graphic tees, and even the hoodie you saw me wearing or different variations of such there. Thank you again to Kamira for sponsoring this video, and make sure to check the description and pinned comment for more information. Let's get back to the video, detectives. Awakening, Mortal Online's second expansion would hit the game August 20th, 2012, and include a new graphic user interface, a new AI system for the NPCs, a new region to explore, and a number of bug fixes. Awakening is an expansion I've feel like I've just seen before, and what I mean by that is that the concept of the game having an expansion focus on new content while the main game isn't exactly ironed out is quite typical in MMORPGs. It's a quality expansion, but two years after launch and Mortal Online's major issues still seem to be center stage. Performance, hit registration, and the lacking of criminal systems. The first two very likely were married to Mortal Online and not exactly easy to fix. My evidence for this is observing the other titles we have covered on the series that were also based in Unreal Engine 3. All Points Bulletin, created by the GTA creator David Jones, for example, suffered from immense performance issues and lack of proper hit detection for a shooter to which many people blamed on Unreal Engine 3. 
Whether or not we can blame all of this on Unreal Engine 3 is kind of beside the point, because we can at least draw some parallels or suspicion towards its usage again, and the issues that arise from such in both games. Mortal Online would go free to play November 29th, 2012. Why Starvolt took so long to make this transition is quite surprising to me, because either they were getting enough revenue without it, which is kind of doubtful regarding them making a transition to free-to-play in the first place, which takes time, or they weren't as focused on revenue, with the memes of the owner of the company being the son of a rich guy. Obviously, I don't know if this is true. They're just memes. Sometimes memes are true. Still, the transition could very well help the ailing population of the game. The new free-to-play system would offer a premium account status allowing players to level past 60 and allow for thievery and object looting, as well as additional character slots for those that would subscribe. Whether or not the transition was that useful is impossible to know without metrics to track or any signs or announcements concerning such. Usually, whenever a game goes free-to-play, they announce the great success from such. But it's very likely that although the free-to-play transition helped, it might have been too little, too late. The Sarduka expansion would launch January 1st, 2015, adding yet another continent to explore, this time an impenetrable jungle that would be broken up into six different zones and boast enemies with better loot and expanded AI. Mortal Online, now having been in existence for five years, would launch on Steam August 31st, 2015, completing the age-old one-two punch of going free-to-play, then launching on Steam stereotype prevalent and mini MMOs at the time. This probably sent Mortal Online's active population to higher than it had been in some time, with population data becoming public for the first time for the players using Steam. At launch, there was 1,172 players peak and 768 players average. Mortal Online would score a 51% mixed score from about 3,000 users overall. Unfortunately, a Steam launch for Mortal Online would fail to have lasting success, though. With within a few months, the population had dropped down to 221 average and 335 peak. A heavy blow dealt to all hardcore full loot PvP MMORPGs would be dealt July 17, 2017, with the launch of a new title of the same genre dubbed Albion Online, and allowing for play across multiple platforms. Albion Online would have the advantage games like RuneScape would boast, another hardcore MMORPG, with a more simplistic gameplay and combat style making it far more accessible for players across the board. Contrast this with Darkfall Online and Mortal Online, which are both titles that take considerable action combat skills and even RPG combat skills to excel at. Albion would go into a Steam launch later on of its own to have a rather respectable population, especially for such a title. Meanwhile, titles like Mortal Online would only continue to falter. While it's easy to write off games like Mortal Online who manage to survive but survive with such small populations, it's still impressive that Mortal Online by 2019 had nearly existed for a full decade. Which is also exactly as much time as it took for Star Vault to introduce Haven, a new player tutorial to the game. And this is kind of a reoccurring theme with uh, hardcore games. I mean, they kind of take forever to offer good, accessible new player experiences, so they kind of make sure that new players don't want to experience the game. Haven was a brilliant addition to Mortal Online, but nearly a decade late. Unfortunately, like many of the best parts of Mortal Online, which probably speaks to the fact that developers behind the project had very little resources, because they would update things properly, but it would just take them a long time. But slow updates in a live online world is never going to attract players at a grander scale, especially when those updates aren't just new content, but much needed quality of life changes and more. Star Vault, a publicly traded company, wasn't going to be able to eat or move forward off of the minuscule population left in Mortal Online so they had to make some big moves. They got a grant with Epic Games to utilize the new Unreal Engine 4 to craft a new sequel MMORPG to Mortal Online, dubbed simply Mortal Online 2. They would announce entering a playable early access test in December of 2019, and be playable over the course of 2020 and 2021 in different phases. Fast forward to 2022, following the launch of Mortal Online 2 January 25th, 2022, and Mortal Online 2 has sold over 110,000 copies, making it probably the most successful hardcore full loot MMORPG launched yet. 
Unfortunately, it would seem that Star Vault's success would be kind of short-lived, at least so far, and they wouldn't learn from their mistakes of Mortal Online, or at least the developers on the series that we have covered so far. And Mortal Online 2, despite its great success, would be met with innumerable login and queue issues. Players overtaxing your servers in an attempt to get in, constantly stuck in a queue to play the game. And I mean queues that last as long as a day. It's not a good look for Star Vault and their newly launched sequel, especially with Mortal Online now a relic of the past. But perhaps they can still persevere with the newly acquired capital and player base, but they must certainly act before it's too late. There is some good in Mortal Online too. I enjoy the game even when I'm not stuck in a queue for days. It seems to solve the issues of the PvP consequence largely and is far more enjoyable to play action combat wise. It also has the strengths that Mortal Online already made famous, the crafting, the player versus environment, things like cooking, player animal taming, and you name it. Just in an updated box, essentially. Which actually does the game a lot of favors. But Star Vault can't let issues fester like they did before with Mortal Online. Not with the scale and size of the game and population they were dealing with now. In fact, Star Vault's in a very dangerous position that many companies outside of video games can fall victim to. That's being victims of success. If Star Vault's not able to catch up to the success, then it could mean we're covering yet another game on the series. This catches us up to now, but we still have a bit of an unsure future and conclusion for Mortal Online. The title exists in some sort of development limbo, without active development, as Star Vault is now focused on the sequel. But even then, the fans of the title don't wish to see it shut down and have brought up discussions concerning such. Whatever Star Vault may choose to do with Mortal Online, keep the servers running for nostalgia or historical purposes, or shut them down for good, the story and history of Mortal Online has come to an end. Up to this point, we have obtained enough clues to make our final deduction concerning the largest contributing factors to the death of a game, Mortal Online. Unreal Engine 3 seems to have caused yet more issues in this game's development. Star Vault were learning on the job. Poor system implementation is an example of that. Hit registration and latency issues. Free-for-all PvP with a poor criminal and punishment system. A slow as molasses update cycle. A poor new player experience that took nearly a decade to be fixed. Ultimately abandoned development for the sequel. While the failure of a title like Mortal Online for some is as simple as well as a PvP focused MMORPG, so of course it's gonna fail. But for us willing to dive deeper, we can find as we have found thus far and just deduced other clues and factors that contributed to the game's death. Mortal Online offered a world where you could effectively do whatever you wanted to do, within reason. Take up a life as a traitor, travel the lands, join a military cult, or even become the world's greatest miner. It wasn't just for PvPers. Mortal Online might have never taken to blockbuster heights, but what they tried to attempt to do was indeed a Herculean effort. Trying to effectively be the EVE Online, except on the ground, and taking much inspiration from the classic pioneer MMORPG of the industry, Ultima Online. There has to be a certain level of respect offered to companies like Star Vault, who were pioneers in their own right, and did so with very little money and resources. Without them pushing boundaries like graphics and gameplay and even systems, the MMORPG industry as a whole can become stagnant. To put simply, without companies like Star Vault, MMOs would look ugly. That innovation and pushing things forward allowed even Star Vault to come back with a sequel of their own, this time being even more successful when they're not getting players stuck in the server queue. Thus, there has to be some sort of lesson learned there, and some sort of value derived from the original idea and possible failure. That's because establishing a massive sandbox and providing users with a plethora of tools to navigate and connect with each other through it, whether via chat, trade, or of course combat, is a tenet of the MMORPG industry that dates all the way back to the dawn of, well, the industry. It was what developers did when they lacked the development teams and resources to keep up with the enormous workload required to have developer-created content like raids and so on and so forth, things very common in a theme park MMO. And it worked, a few times even to a great degree. It just didn't work for Mortal Online, who also tried to reach this graphical and gameplay height that none of the other titles before had even really attempted. So if Star Vault is able to make things work with Mortal Online 2, we have a truly innovative MMORPG on our hands. 
One that allows you to experience the game's beautiful graphics in first person, and dangerous world full of full loot PvP. And whether you like this style of MMORPG or not, that's good for all of us. Thanks for watching, guys. We are all outlaws, but some of us will become legends. Thank you.